good morning and a very warm welcome to our worship on this Sunday morning. A warm welcome to those of you here with us in the building and those of you who are joining us online. Just a few housekeeping things for when we come to receiving communion. Communion is received here at the front and um, if you come from right to left, filling up the whole row and then when you've received the bread and if you wish the wine, then simply peel off to the side that you're nearest to in order to return to your seat. We begin by those who are furthest away coming first and our stewards will be sure to let you know when it's time to come up. And so the invitation this morning to still our hearts and minds as we prepare to worship God. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Together we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. So in the knowledge of that love, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God, our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord, God who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by God's Holy Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. O Lord, let the world be ordered in peace according to your will, that your people may be free to worship you with joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Please be seated as we hear today's readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. The servant whom Abraham had sent said to Laban, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys, And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going. I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, Drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder. And she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she watered also the camels. Then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebecca and said to her, Will you go with this man? And she said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebecca and her nurse, along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebecca and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebecca and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Beer Lahirai and was settled in the Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field. Looking up, he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up. And when she saw Isaac, she slipped swiftly 
from the camel and said to the servant, who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, it is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebecca, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know nothing, that, nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. 
Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer that I do it, but the sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. be with you. And also. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to Christ our Saviour. At that time Jesus said, to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, 
for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated. <coughs> so here we are in this ordinary season, in this great green growing season, this time when the kingdom is laid before us. This year, we're focusing on Matthew's Gospel. You would be forgiven for thinking there's an awful lot in all of our readings this morning. I would encourage you to go back and to read those previous chapters from Genesis that has brought us up to this point. Because today, so much goes on. We're reminded today of that point in our daily prayer each morning when we come to the Benedictus, reminded of our forefather Abraham and all that he did for us and how from him everything has followed on. We're also reminded here of the great hospitality, of a radical hospitality that is being offered here, such generosity as we have got to this point where it's recognized that through all Abraham went through, through his faith, through his time in the desert, through leaving his home and his hometown to go not where he knew, to follow God's call to him as he has done this, as he has faithfully followed. So God has been equally faithful to him. We have heard that he has become wealthy, that he has all the things needed for a flourishing community. He continues to share this generosity of God with others as we hear in today's reading. We then hear from Paul as he writes his letter to the Romans. Granted, it's not one of the easiest things to understand. It's not Paul at his most clear. But as he writes to the Romans, he's encouraging them continually in their faith, encouraging them to recognize that we are all human and in our humanity often comes some vulnerabilities, comes some frailties comes things that we cannot always overcome, as we hear from him, despite every good will. For we hear of the things that he wishes he could do, and yet he knows that there is sin that dwells within him. So he encourages that community of Romans, and he continues to encourage us. And then we come to our gospel, of a gospel that is in two sections. There's a chunk missed out in the middle. Again, when you go home, I would encourage you to read the whole of that chapter to see what comes before and what comes in the middle. But these are two important parts that the lectionary writers have highlighted for us today. And in a way, if you look at the themes through all of these, they're linked in all of our readings. It's not feasible in the time that we have this morning to unpack all of these themes. You can understand why there are churches that end up with 20 minutes worth or half an hour worth of sermons when presented with readings like this. But fear not, hopefully 10 minutes will be the maximum today. 
I wonder how we feel as we hear what Jesus is saying. To what will I compare this generation? I wonder if you're sitting there thinking how relevant this is to the day and the time and the age that we find ourselves in. I wonder what answer we get if we reply, to what will I compare this generation, the one that is here right now? But he looks at it and recognizes it and invites us into this. It's not something that was for them there and back in those years. It is something for us here and now and of our time. But then we get that most tender moment as Jesus speaks to his father. I wonder if you can remember a time when you heard someone speak of their father. It may have been at a memorial service or a funeral. It may have been in an obituary. But often, the children of a parent tend to know them better than we know them as friends. Or perhaps it is somebody that we see in our news. Somebody that we tend to see on the surface. And yet, when we hear somebody close to them reflecting, well, this is something here similar that Jesus is doing. He's saying to his disciples and to those people gathered there that if you know me, then you have known the Father. But he's also encouraging them to come as infants, to see without all those layers of clouds and all those preconceptions, without all those things that provide us with prejudice and bias, to set those aside. And as we do that, then we see Jesus and we see God far more clearly. We often find ourselves saying that we recognize that we are made in God's image. But often that's not the image that Jesus is thinking about when he writes this. It tends to be a convenient box that we've set God in. It's our image of God, rather than the other way around. Jesus invites us in this moment, in this time, and in this place to come to him. We do not need to be great scholars. We do not need to have studied theology or got lots of degrees. But we're encouraged to come with that curiosity, with that eagerness of a child. I wonder, as you watch children around about you, how many times you comment about just how they come to look at things with such eager, inquisitive eyes. That today is what we're being encouraged to do. We're being encouraged to recognize and have a relationship with a God who loves us who welcomes us irrespective of who we are or what we may or may not have done. This is a God who is not like a head teacher or your teacher who's going to give you a report card or to use a red pen. This is not like a policeman who's going to check you off because you didn't pray long enough or hard enough or read your Bible every day. This is a God who welcomes you who says that whatever it is that you have inside of you, your frailty, your vulnerabilities, the things going on inside you, that his arms are wide enough and strong enough to carry them on your behalf. The yoke that he carries is light for him to carry, and we are able to bring as much as we need to bring to him. And so today, let us think as we come and receive communion or a blessing today, 
that that moment is an invitation to you to lay down all that you need to do at this altar, to be people who recognize that you are loved by an ever-loving God, that you are people who carry the light of Christ in you for those around you and for yourselves, and that when we know that, life becomes a little easier. Those things that cause us concern and anxiety can sometimes be lifted just a little bit. I wonder if you've ever seen or heard the story of this man who goes to collect water every day. He does so just using one of those yokes with his two buckets on each end of his yoke. Each day he goes to collect water. One of the buckets has a small hole in it. And people back in his village, when he's come back with it, say, why don't you mend that hole or get a new bucket? And he said, but if you look behind me, look what has happened at the side of the path. For on one side, as he's come back from the river with the water, there's just a lot of flowers flourishing. That little bit of water that crack that let the good things out provided something which made a difference to all. So even as we come with our brokenness, we don't necessarily need to fix all of the holes because we know that through those holes, through those cracks, God does good things through us. So I wonder... I wonder just where you will water and encourage some flourishing this week as you head out from here, fed and blessed and full of God's grace from this time here, heading out into the kingdom of God. Amen. So let us stand as we are able and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us pray for the church and the world, giving thanks for God's goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, 
to hear us when we pray in faith. We give thanks for the Church throughout the world, our sister Diocese of Quebec, our own Church, Diocese, and Bishop and the clergy of this cathedral. And we give thanks for the particular work of the Church within this cathedral and throughout our own diocese. Strengthen your church to carry forward the work of Christ, that we and all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world in their state of turmoil, for the tensions in and internationally around the conflict in Ukraine and the many innocent people who have been trapped within it. We pray for our own leaders and all people in their various callings. Give wisdom to all in authority. Direct this nation and all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that people may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for the local community, our families and friends, as they support us in our daily lives. And we give thanks for those supporting the many people who are in need during this time of the cost of living crisis. Give grace to us, our families and friends, to all our neighbours in Christ, that we may serve him in one another, and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the suffering within this congregation, Stuart Moss, Theda Logan, Sandra Peterkin, Dennis Sanderson, Mary Jameson, Katrina O'Neill, Louisa Cross, Cliff Piper, Frank Zavandi, and Brenda Green. We remember those who mourn, those without faith. We give thanks and pray for those who serve them and relieve them. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the recently departed known to us and remember the year's mind of Katie Cocker. Isabella Stewart, John Searle, Elspeth Howie, Nora Sesford, George McIver MacDonald, Robert Sutherland, and Carol Baker. We commend all people to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled and we may rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
also as we come to the peace, would you stand as you're able? Jesus came among his disciples and said, My peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Let us present our offerings to the Lord. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ, your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth in a creation restored by love. 
as children of your redeeming purpose, who are marked with the seal of your spirit for the day of our final liberation, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. and thanksgiving be to you, Lord of all. For by the cross, eternal life is ours, and death is swallowed up in victory. In the first light of Easter, glory broke from the tomb and changed the women's sorrow into joy. From the garden, the mystery shone clear that he whom they had loved and lost is with us now in every place forever making himself known in the breaking of the bread, speaking peace to the fearful disciples, greeting fishermen on the shore. He renewed the promise of his presence and of new birth in the spirit who sets the seal of freedom on your daughters and sons. Before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which slaves walked free, at supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body. It is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful God, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by your Spirit's life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory, May we grow together in unity and love, until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, 
Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So draw near to receive the body and blood of our dear Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our Redeemer, the bread of life, the cup of grace. You are invited to come as you are, for God loves you as you are.
Give thanks to our gracious God. O oh God, may we who have shared in holy things never fail to serve you in your world, and so come to the fullness of joy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, your steadfast purpose is the completion of all things in your Son. May we who have received the pledges of the kingdom live by faith, walk in hope, and be renewed in love until the world reflects your glory and you are all in all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You will have found the notice sheets that were available as you came in today. If you didn't manage to collect one on your way in and would like to know what's happening in the days ahead, then be sure to have a look. A very warm welcome to you all to stay with us for refreshments after our worship today. They're served here in the cathedral down towards the baptistry, my left and your right. You're very warmly welcome to share in that hospitality with us. And so as we come to the blessing, would you please stand as you're able? The Lord be with you. The peace of God, which truly passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love for this day and for always. Amen. In the knowledge of God's infinite love for us as we are, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.